the reason why I would like to uh, have this uh, session is because, okay, I discovered that most of our colleagues, okay, say, uh, I'm not so familiar with Excel, Microsoft Excel, okay, something like that. But finally, I find that, okay, they are not, not, uh, not only, okay, not familiar with the features of uh, Microsoft Excel, but also they are not familiar with uh, those uh, mathematical tools, okay, uh, in helping us to do analysis. Uh, on our business data, so that's why I I I I decide this uh, this uh, course okay to teach you how to making use of those uh, data to do uh, analysis okay. However, okay, I'm not an 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 analysis an analysis guy in the end form, but I also doing uh, data analysis for my universities because I have a research okay on environmental engineering about the uh, harmful uh, harmful algae algae booming. Okay, so that's why I have experience in uh, doing um, uh, machine learning and uh, data an analysis on some uh, real situation. Okay, so no problem. Okay, I have this knowledge. Okay, <laughs> anyway, okay, let me uh, tell you, okay, what I will cover today. Okay, basically for today's session, okay, I will first of all teach you how to, wow, <laughs> what happened, even though the PowerPoint encounter problem today what's wrong <laughs> okay for today's session okay i will first of all okay teach you uh, something related to correlational analysis okay why I, I would like to teach you how to use the correlational analysis okay because uh, in our real situation there are so many so many factors will affect ourselves Okay, especially uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in the business environment. For example, you don't, if you know the, uh, maybe the GDP of a country and also the, um, at the environment, at the temperature and also the weather of a, a location will affect the sales of a, a certain coast. Okay, for example, maybe uh, as you can remember five years back, because at that time, because of the global warm warming, okay, nobody else will pay money for clothes, okay, in the winter, because it, that's so hot, okay? So, I will teach you, okay, something related to data analytics about the correlational analysis, how to find out what factor will affect your, uh, your, your sales amount very much, okay? I will teach you, okay, how to make use of this, uh, this technique. And also, I will teach you some features that has already embedded in Microsoft Excel that to let you to do the correlational uh, analysis without any pain. Okay, because uh, there are so many, so many mathematical equations you need to know. Okay, be before doing the correlational uh, analysis. However, once you know the tools in Excel, okay, no pain, okay, at all. And what next? That is about the uh, forecasting. Because uh, most of the time you need to know, okay, what happened, okay, in the upcoming one to two years. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe the uh, the market of the upcoming one or two years. Maybe, and also you need to forecast the uh, purchasing behavior of your customer as well. So, what technique you should know? Okay, I will teach you some very very simple uh, uh, forecasting technique. For example, something called the regression analysis. Anyone of you has already know what is regression analysis? No. I will teach you how to using regression analysis to do forecasting. However, if you say, wow, regression analysis, I need to know so many, so many mathematical equations. Yes, okay, in, in the old time, the, the answer is yes. However, with Excel, all the function has already embedded for you. What you need to know now is to, to, uh, to, uh, to, um, how to say, okay, to give a comment to the uh, analytic value. Okay, I will teach you how to make use of the tools, okay, to do the forecasting as well. Okay, so this is basically the two most important things I will teach and mention in this session. Now, come to the first topic. Okay, how to do the correlations and uh, correlational analysis. Okay, what happened? Okay, now this is the first equation I will mention in this course. Okay, this is about the correlational and uh, correlation coefficient. Okay, this is uh, okay. The co the full name is Pearson's correlation coefficient. Okay, the equation is like this. Wow, very complicated, right? However, okay, I don't want to mention this equation first. And let me let me show you something. Okay, very interesting. This is what we so call the correlation matrix. Okay, 
Do you know what's the meaning for this uh, coefficient matrix? Okay, basically, I will teach you a Excel function, okay, which will help you to uh, formulate this correlation matrix very easily. What is the use of this correlation matrix? As you can see here, what is that? This is Dow Jones index, S, S and P 500, FTSE 100, something like that. All are those are what? The index of the share market of different locations. And this correlation matrix tell you what uh, 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 something very interesting. That is to see, okay, which index has correlation with another index. Okay, for example, as you can see here, uh, this is the row called a uh, row, row side and column side. As you can see here, Dow Jones and Dow Jones index. What's the uh, correlation index? That is one. Why? Because Dow Jones and Dow Jones are the same thing. So the correlation ship is one. However, if you can see here, S and P five hundred with Dow Jones is still point nine two. What does it mean? That means if the index number is close to one, what does it mean? That means they are they have a very strong correlation with each other. Okay, if the index is tends to what tends to zero, what does it mean? That what does it mean? They have a loosened correlation Okay, loosened correlation how about negative number? Negative number, what does it mean? They have also have a what relationship, but that is what? That is a, a reversely a, a, a proportional. Okay, what does it mean? That means if okay, this index, okay, uh, up one for uh, one at uh, one point, if the uh, the another index have a correlation, which is negative one, what does it mean? That means this up one and the other index will, will what will decrease one. Do you have any idea? Because of a one, what does it mean? Diversely proportional. However, if that is negative one, what does it mean? Reversely proportional. Okay, do you have any idea? Okay, let me show you another chart. It's like this. For one, diversely proportional. Linearly diversely proportional, right? However, if that is negative one, what does it mean? Reversely proportional. Okay? If this index is up one, and the other index with a negative one correlation, it will was decreased by one. Okay. However, if if okay, the index decreased by what something? If the index turned to zero point eight, what does it mean? Not so proportional. Okay. Will will those are record will 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 distribute in this manner? If it tends to zero, what does it mean? We can't find any correlation relationship here. Can you see this? Okay, this is actually okay. Some graphics you I can show you what was the meaning of one to negative one. Okay, is it here? So how to calculate this? Uh, how to generate this? The correlation uh, correlation matrix. This is a question because as you can see here, the formula are very complicated. If you would like to calculate, okay, each index one by one, okay, you need to sub all the data into this formula, okay, which is very complicated. However, with the help of Microsoft Excel, okay, your life will become easier, okay. However, what I say is easier, not very easy, okay, still not very easy, okay. Let me let me uh, let me give you have a look my example basically. Okay, as you can see, okay, the first fact sheet, you have already received so many data, right? The data are come from the survey form of this survey form. As you can see here, basically, this is a, a survey form for, uh, for asking the customer about the service level of a certain department. Okay, as you can see here, okay, how many questions all together here for this survey form? Okay, we have B1, B2, and B3, and B4, right? Okay, for design a survey form, okay, most of the time we will, we will, we will, we would like to have questions, okay, to ask different questions, okay, on different awana, okay, for example, the first question, B1, is, uh, is ask, asking the what, the account management services, and the second one is what, about the operation management services, and the third question is what, ask for what, level and infrastructure stability, something like that. And the last one is what? It's the overall weighting. Okay, most of the time, if you try to fill in those survey forms, that the questions will, will, will what? Will allocate in this manner. 
So first area, second area, third area, fourth area, five area, and after that, after all, we have an overall rating given to the department, right? So why do you design like this? Because we would like to see, okay, the overall impression of the of the department. Where, okay, which factor will affect the overall in, the impression much? This is what we want to know, okay, by design, designing this kind of survey form. Okay, for example, out here, why we would like to uh, set the survey form in this manner? Because we would like to know, okay, whether or not the archive management service is more important to, uh, to, uh, to affect the impression, the overall impression of our customer. Or the area fee, the level and infrastructure, or the area two, will affect more, okay? So that's why we will design in this manner. Okay, so what happened? Let me show you the Excel spreadsheet. What you can get here, okay, for the first Excel spreadsheet is like this, okay? Here, we'll show you, okay, the the, uh, the, the reply, okay, of each, uh, each, uh, each participant, okay, of the survey form, okay? Here is their, their uh, working country, here is the what? The first question's answer, second question's answer, third question's answer, and the overall question's answer here. Okay, all of them will, be, will turn into what? Good, poor, average comment. Can you see this? However, if you would like to do an, an analysis, you need to first of all do, to do what? To convert this comment into numbers, right? So what should I do? Okay, all together, how many different comments all together we have for each question? How many? Five, right? Poor, average, good, excellent, and not acceptable, right? See? So, I will, I, I first, the, the first thing I would like to do is to convert this result, okay, into the, the numerical data, okay, to let us to use some numerical way to do analysis. So, what should I do? The first thing I need to do is to clean the data, okay, and to convert them into the numerical data. So, what should I do? First of all, okay, I need to, for example, I would like to convert. If the answer is not acceptable, what should I do? I will turn the answer into zero. If it is the, the, the answer is poor, it's one. Average is two. Good is three. Excellent is four. So what should I do? Very simple. First of all, I would like to copy the question title first. First of all, I would like to copy the question title. Okay, the hard piece, highlight the B1 to K1. Control C, okay, to copy the question titles. And then move the carrot, okay, the, the active cell to L1 and Control V. Okay, first of all, I would like to repeat the table header first. Okay, this is B1 efficiency, B1 communication, B1 quality, B2 efficiency, something like that. Please copy another set of header, okay, from L1 to U1. Okay, do you know how to do it? Very simple. Just highlight B1 to K1, Control C, and then move your active cell to L and Control V. Very simple. This is first part I would like to do. And second, I would like to convert all the uh, textual data into numerical. So what should I do? Now, let me show you. Please, okay, add one more spreadsheet, okay? Please move your mouse, okay, to the uh, tab page, that tab here, correlation analysis tab, and right page. And out here, please select what? Please, please select insert. Out here, to tell the spreadsheet, okay, I would like to insert one more new spreadsheet, double click spreadsheet, then you will have one more spreadsheet, okay? Please check and drop, okay? behind the correlation analysis tab, okay, here. And please also rename the sheet one to another name. For example, now double click the sheet one tab here, and then rename it as a gray table. Gray table. Okay. Okay. What next? Okay, because according to 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 the survey form here, 
not a a a a a a a a a a Okay, I will turn it to what? Zero. So, he's formulate a table like this. Not acceptable, zero. And poor is one. And uh, what next? Okay, average is two. And good is three. Excellent is four, like this. Okay, he's formulate this table. The reason why I would like to formulate this table because I would like to apply the VLOOKUP fun function to convert all the textual data into numerical data. Okay. So what should I do? Okay, this is the first part. Formulate this table first, and second. Most of the time, for more convenient, I will do it in this way. I will highlight this table and then click here. Okay, here now is A1, right? And please type gray here and click enter. G L A D E and enter. What does it mean? Because I will, would like to turn this area A1 to B5 to name, name this area as gray. Okay? It will let, uh, make you more convenient in calling this table in a formula. Okay? Why say so? Okay. Ready? Right? Now, here, I will do something like this. Here is L1, L2, uh, L2 equal to V look up. V look up what? We look up this value. Good. Right? B1. And comma. And ask the we look one should to look up from which? From the gray table. G G R A C. What happened? After you type G, what happened? It will show you. Ah, David, there's a table called gray. Can you see? A pop message over here. You may just uh, simply press the tab button. That gray will appear here. What does it mean? Because the uh, Excel has already know. Okay, there's a table called gray. Then whenever you type G, then and uh, the system will notice you. Okay, there's a, a, a table called gray. Are you calling this table? It will have a uh, some help message, pop message to 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 help you to type gray. Okay, what next? Okay, if okay. I collect the value, okay, some data from B2 cell and then check it from the gray table. If I can see the value appear on the first column of gray table, then what happened? Please return the second column value to the cell. Is it clear? This is the, this is the function of VLOOKUP, right? And then what next? And add one more comma here and then it will ask you, is it select among True or false? Okay, if you would like to return the exact value, okay, of the table, okay, what should you do? You may choose false, okay? So out here, because I would like to convert good into a numerical value, which with an exact value, right? So that's why I will select false here. After that, press the close bracket button and then press enter. See what happened. According to the table, okay, Good is what? Free. So the system will automatically what? But the, the, the video function will automatically to what? To convert good into what? Free. See? Is it here? That's all of you know the function of video up. Okay, basically, video up is like this. Okay. If you create a table like this, okay, this then the system, the video function will what? We check the value, okay, from the first column of the table, okay. If you find that, okay, it is not acceptable, then it will return zero. If the video function ask, uh, ask the, uh, ask the Excel to return the second column of the, uh, of the, uh, of the gray table, okay, then it will return the second column of the gray table, okay, to, to, to the, to the cell, to, to the cell. 
However, as you can see here, since I have already okay named the table as gray, so what happened? If I just simply jet and drop, I cause okay the row from L2 to U2. See what happened? It will show you here. See, we look up B2 cell, and here is what C2. What does it mean by C2? As you can see here, C2 is this cell, and D2 is this cell. E, E2, F2, G2. Okay. Then you may just a simply jet and drop the video of a uh, 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 function formula. Okay, across the row from L2 to U2, then you will you will uh, compute the conversion for the first uh, the first record. If you say David, I would like to compute the rest of the record. Okay, the, the conversion. Then what should I do? Very simple. After you highlight the first row, then what should you do? Jet and drop. Okay, to the end of this table. Just like this, right? And be list. Then all the converted data will be sold on the right hand side of the table, like this. Okay. The reason why it will it will do it, it will uh, convert it uh, automatically in this manner. The reason is okay because the first cell okay here what we use is the what is the relative location relative of location of the cell. Then when we check and drop, okay, all the, uh, the cell value will automatically in increase, okay, from A column to E column, okay, and from, from 2 to 1098 and uh, 89, like this. However, because of this part, okay, the name of the table are fixed. So it is relatively like the words absolute reference of the active cell. So that's why this, this part is fixed. Okay, no matter okay which value is sub sub uh, subscribe into the VLOOKUP value. Okay, the VLOOKUP uh, formula will also lo looking for the uh, corresponding value from the table uh, gray. Okay, so that's why I, I will suggest you to first of all to name okay the table as gray first because of once we name it as gray, that is equivalent to what to absolute reference of Excel in Excel. Okay, it is very simple, right? Not simple. <laughs> yeah. Okay, first of all, we need to first of all to convert those uh, Tesla data into numerical data, right? So what you get here is a set of numerical data. Then what next? What next is to doing the analysis, right? Okay, how to convert this numerical data into what? Into a correlationship, a correlation matrix. Okay, to do analysis. So what should I do? First of all, okay, uh, teach you uh, some uh, some tricks. Okay, in Microsoft Excel. Press the control button and move the wheel up and down. Can zoom in and zoom out. Okay, the whole sheet, right? Control wheel up and wheel down. If you got the mouse, <laughs> thank you. Then, then you can zoom in and zoom out the spreadsheet very easily. Okay. If you won't have a mouse, okay, I feel so sorry about it. Okay. <laughs> because I hate using the touchpad or thinkpad because the design is very poor. Yeah. So that's why I bought my own mouse. <laughs> Okay, now this is the first thing I would like to teach you is some trick, okay? Okay, to control, zoom in and zoom out, right? And the second thing that is before we, um, before, okay, we doing the call, we have to generate the correlation matrix, okay, be honest, uh, our Excel originally won't have any function to convert some data into a correlation matrix. So what should we do? Okay, 
piece. Select this one. Press the File menu here. What next is to choose the Option function, uh, option here. After you see that option, you see here we have something called the add-ins. This is very, very important. Add-ins. Can you see add-ins? Okay, basically what are add-ins? Because uh, for Microsoft Excel, if they loading so many features, okay, onto Microsoft Excel, it will take a, quite a long, long, uh, quite a long, uh, yeah? Okay, see this one. It will take some time. Because of Microsoft Excel, they have so many, so many different functions. Okay, for example, whenever you open the Microsoft Excel, it will take a long, long time to run the program before you can use the Excel spreadsheet, right? That's the reason. So, uh, for Microsoft, they have uh, some idea in mind. That is, if that function is not frequently used by user, they will put it aside and put it as add-in functions. That means whenever you want this function, you need to add in by yourself. Okay. On the other hand, of course, if you you find the Microsoft Excel, uh, the function of Microsoft Excel is not so good. Okay, to your web page experience. Okay, you may also buy some uh, add-in program from some third-party developers. Okay, of course, for those uh, add-in, you need to pay money for those uh, developer. Okay, or else you can't access it. Okay, basically, I teach you something uh, uh, fee, uh, which is fee. Okay, no, not need to pay money first. Okay. First of all, select add in here, and then out here, can you see something called the manage Excel add in? Can you see this option? Okay, and then click the go button. Can you see here? Then it will prompt you a data box called the what? Add in available. Okay, basically, I would suggest you to click the first one and the, the last one, okay, uh, to add into your Microsoft Excel. The first one, okay, is those uh, features I would like to cover this. Uh, for today's session, this is analysis two pack. This is very very useful. Okay, this is like the first one, and the last one is the sofa add in. What's the use of sofa add in? Okay, if you are coming from the um, LF logistic, okay, it is very very use useful to you. Okay, do you know why? Because uh, for logistic guys, okay, most of them need to solve some uh, transportation problem. If you would like to uh, solve those uh, transportation problem, you need to use the function linear programming. Okay, and for this, okay, so far at it, basically, is the linear programming features of Microsoft Excel. It is very useful. Of course, if you be professional, okay, we will not use Excel to, uh, to solve such a uh, complicated problem. However, what, what the, uh, uh, what the company provides us is Microsoft Excel, then this is the only tools you can use. Okay, be honest, for me, if I, I try to solve a linear programming uh, uh, problems, I will use Python and MATLAB instead. Okay, I will not use Microsoft Excel. And uh, actually, okay, have you clicked these two options? If, if so, then click OK. So, what happened? Now, okay, I just uh, simply zoom out my spreadsheet a little bit first. And now, I, I, I scroll up, okay, to the top of the spreadsheet, and then now, please select this ribbon, data. Can you see the data ribbon here? Once you see the data ribbon here, on the rightmost right side of the data ribbon, can you see, we have already added two, two new features. The first one is solver, the second one is data analysis. Can you see this? Okay. Now, what should I do? I see like this one, data analysis. If you have experience in uh, in doing statistics, okay, then you will know okay how powerful these features are. Okay, we have ANOVA, okay, single factor ANOVA, two factor with uh, uh, replication, correlation, covariance, descriptive and statistics, something like that. And Fourier analysis as well. Okay, but now, okay, you know which features I would like to see that? Which one? Of course, correlation. Can you see? One, two, three, four. This, the fourth one is correlation. See? Okay, please select the correlation features. Okay? Select correlation features. Okay, okay. 
see what happens. Okay, it will prompt you a dialog box. Okay, and ask you to what? Okay, first thing. Okay, input input range to input some data into this feature to let it to generate the correlation matrix for you. Yes. <laughs> Change some work worker first. Okay. This is point number one. Okay. So input range. Which is the input 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 range? Okay, from L one to what? Till the end. Okay, just stretch it again. And just till the end here is the U one thousand four hundred and thirty six. See here. Okay, and here ask it will ask another question. That is group by what? Group by column or group by rows? Okay, because uh, all the questions are grouped by what? Columns. So I will select columns. Because I for column L, column M, column N, column O are, are what? Are representing different questions. So that's why I will select what? Columns. Group by columns. If all this category are what? I put, I put uh, group, uh, horizontally, then we will select what? Select group by rows. But for this case, because of all the questions are what? Group by columns. So we will select group by columns. Is it clear? And the second thing that is, because of we, we, we highlight from L1, okay, L1 is what? L1 basically, the row 1 is the what, what? The label of the column. So we need to take this check box, okay, to tell the system, okay, the first row is the label. Okay? And now, what next? Okay, most properly, I will do nothing to the output option because I will uh, I will uh, simply use the default option, new worksheet. Okay, so at this moment, I will just uh, simply click what? Click OK. See what happened. One more new worksheet has already generated. That, uh, it will call sheet 2. Okay, for convenience, I will rename it as correlation matrix. This is basically, actually, is the what? It's the correlation matrix. See here. In your own time, okay, you need to calculate, you, you need to have so many calculations in order to generate this uh, matrix. For example, for each value, you need to substitute so many, so many formula. And if you are come from ITS, you will know you need to have at least four for loop to do the calculation. However, now what happened? You just highlight the whole area and put into Microsoft Excel, and then the correlation matrix generated for you. Very simple. Now the second thing, very important thing, okay, is to interpret, interpret the result, okay, to calculate calculation. All the stuff has already calculated by Microsoft Excel. However, how to import, interpret the value, the result? That is the most important part. Okay, see what happened. Okay, it is very difficult for us to to have a look, okay, and do analysis and do interpretation, okay, for this matrix because all our numbers very boring, right? So what should you do? Okay, tell you one thing. I will making you something called the conditional formatting to help you, okay, to have a better view, okay, of this form uh, this result. So what should I do? First of all, highlight this area. These are the result, right? And the second thing is what? Okay, go back to home tab here and go to what? Conditional formatting, right? Conditional formatting. And then out here, we have something called the manage rules. Okay, I think most of you know this function, conditional formatting, right? What's the use of conditional formatting? Basically, conditional formatting will know how to what? How to convert the format of the cell, okay, according to the value of the cell. This is very, very useful. Why I say so? Okay, for example, now, okay, as I, I said before, okay, if the correlation coefficient is one, what does it mean? Diversely proportional. That means the two results are diversely proportional and with a very strong linear relationship. If, which is what? Negative one, what does it mean? It is inversely proportional. 
very strong linear correlationship. However, if which is what linear to negative one or linear to one, what does it mean? It still have a very strong correlationship as well. What the how about zero? Zero that means what? Really low correlationship. This is very very important. Okay. So what happened? So I would like to color the cell. Okay, with with these findings. Okay. So so what should I do? First of all, take the new rules here. And then what next? Okay, out here, format only cell that contains. Can you see this? See that this option? Okay, because we have different option here, okay, to do transitional formatting. And the second one is called what? Format only cells that contains. Okay, now I have already highlighted the whole, COVID, uh, whole area, okay? So, cell value, that means what? This whole area. And the second thing that is, I would like to know is, okay, I would like to, okay, convert, okay, those uh, cell format, okay, which are quicker than or equal to, quicker than or equal to what? Okay, quicker than or equal to zero point eight. Okay, zero point eight. This is first, okay, and now, I want to change the format. Hit the format button. I want to turn them into what? Bro. And also the color to become wet. And here I change the fill area to yellow as well. Okay, okay. See? I, I do it again. Okay, first of all, the cell value greater than or equal to seal point eight. Okay, so for next, I type it by myself. And click format. First of all, I set the font to go. Color is red. Okay. And the fill area will choose what? Yellow. And after that, click OK. Like this. After that, click OK. This is the first part. If those values, which is greater than or equal to 0, uh, 0 0.8. Okay. That means what? That means I have a quite a strong co-relationship. Okay. Then I will turn it into this color. Right? And what next? I would like to have a second level of correlation, which is what? The, which the value is what? Greater than or equal to 0 0.7. So what should I do? Add one more little rule here. Format only cell that contain what? Which is greater than or equal to 0 0.7. If you don't want to type 0, you may just simply type 0 0.7. Okay? Simple. And now here, I click format, and then I select the fill area become green, and the font bro, and the color is green. Okay, it's still yellow. Okay. 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 It will become this manner. Okay. If the value which is greater than or equal to point seven, we become like this, right? Okay. Okay. After you create these two rules, okay, you think it's okay? You think it's okay? If which is what? Greater than or equal to 0 0.7, okay, this, uh, this format. Greater than or equal to uh, 0 0.8, this format. Is it okay? Okay. If you think it's okay, just simply click okay. See what happened? Wow. All become what? Winning color. Is it correct? It's not correct. Right. Seal point, seal point 879 is we what? Yellow in color. How come it become green in color? Why? You know why? Because seal point 8 also what? Greater than seal point 7. Because it had, because it is also what? If it is larger than seal point 8, it is also larger than seal point 7. So that's why it will, the system will apply the seal point 7 rule into uh, uh, the format on this cell. So, how to make it, okay, how to differentiate these two rules? If you want to, really want to differentiate, if those values which is larger than or equal to 0 0.98 will become yellow in color. So, what should you do? So, just get back, come back to the conditional formatting here, and then go to manage rules again. As you can see here, because of if the system wants the first rule, okay, if the value is greater than or equal to 0 0.7, it will turn it into what? 
win in color. So the second rule will not work. So what should we do? So I will do it in this manner. I will tell the system, okay, to want this rule first. Okay, cell value greater than or equal to zero eight. Okay, so that is this rule, and then move up. You can see here we have a move up and down button. Just simply move the rule. Okay, so that is the rule here, and then get the move up button like this. This is the point number one, and point number two is what? Stop if true. What does it mean? If the cell is already larger than or equal to zero point eight. Then left it yellow in color. Okay. If the rule, the second rule, won again, okay, the, the this the second rule will not affect the result of the first rule. This is what we so-called the stop if true. Is it clear? So after we have this adjustment, so one again, see what happened? See? This is the magic. Okay, what can you see? Okay, what can you find? Okay, from the result, like this. Okay, just first of all, we'll have a look, okay? For question B1, first, okay? For B1, okay, what what question have a very strong correlation? Okay, B1 efficiency and B1 efficiency has a very strong e uh, 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 correlation because they, they are one. But this is noisome because this is for sure one. Why? Because they are the same question, of course they are have they will have a very strong correlation, right? However, can you see here? Coefficient, complication and quality. Okay, what does it mean? They still have very strong correlation. The reason why? Just have a low on the just have a low on the presentation slide here, the questions here. The reason why B1 efficiency, B1 uh, communication and B1 quality, they have all these three questions. Have very strong correlation. Uh, the reason is why, because they are also describing the same area, the archive management. So that's why they have a very strong correlation. It's for sure, because whenever you ask question, okay, you would like to ask the ITS archive management services, okay, and uh, how 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 you weigh the efficiency, communication, and quality. Of course, at that moment, the 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 uh, the participant will think about the same thing. That means that. Uh, all these answers should have a very strong correlation. It is for sure. So maybe this correlation should uh, relationship analysis is not is it's not so meaningful, right? However, if we turn it into see another result here for sure, we they they have what very strong correlation. Very strong correlation. Okay, this is for sure. However, if you go to this green color, although Okay, the value is only a greater than or equal to zero point seven. But this is very remarkable finding. You see this line? This line is very remarkable finding. Why I say so? Because the question four is what? It's the overall impression of IPX, right? The weighting, the overall uh, uh, impression and weighting for IPX. Okay, and now here, what can you see? As you can see here, if those questions with very strong correlation to the overall impression of IDS, which questions have a very strong correlation with the overall impression? That is what? Question B2 and B3. You will see here. And B2 and B3. And B1, very loose correlation. What does it mean? Okay, go back to the survey form. What is the question? The area for archive management. B1 is archive management. What does it mean? That means, okay, the archive management of ITS, okay, won't have, but although that service is very good, won't affect the overall impression of ITS services. This is the interpretation. Can you see that? Because the correlation value is what? Is 0.5, 0.6, something like that. Which the, the value is well. It's not very close to 1, right? So that's me, okay? The correlation, uh, the correlation, uh, the correlation of our, uh, our time management services, okay, doesn't have a very clear correlation to the overall impression of the IDS services. However, which two areas? We have a very strong correlation to the overall impression. 
they are what? They are the operation management. What the, what's the uh, where, what, what 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 are the uh, operation management? That uh, the operation ma management including what? Desktop device delivery, help desk, and out on site support something like that. And also the what? The network infrastructure. Okay. According to your impression, of course, whenever we are call, uh, we, we call about the ITS services, what will what what will you think about? You will think about what? Okay, uh, the connectivity. Okay, to the uh, to the XTX. Maybe the services. Whenever you lost your mouse, okay, whether or not they will respond at, at once to give you a new mouse, okay, for your own for your own computer. It's a very really a uh, really what really um uh, affect the overall impression to ITS services, right? So that's why the finding is very reasonable, okay, according to this analysis. Okay, and also if you will, would like to chew in that, have a look, okay, on the on the on the on the on the on the values, okay. This one is a zero point seven three, zero point seven feet, zero point seven feet. That means what? Basically, okay, for for the uh, op uh, operation management of IT and the level infrastructure of IT are really in, uh, affect the impression of the overall impression uh, of the IPS services. This is what okay the correlation uh, analysis can give you. Can you see this? Of course, if if you would like to do a survey, okay, to look at okay what is very important, okay, to to the customer, then you need to have a correlation analysis, okay, for the survey. Or else, okay, if you just are doing what doing the analysis, the average where mark is what and the uh, standard deviation is what this is not not so 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 uh, important. Okay, to do to to do analysis for us away. But correlation uh, analysis, which is a uh, very important. Okay, because at the very beginning, I don't want to uh, teach you this uh, simple analysis method. Because uh, according to my uh, to my experience, okay, I will prefer to use uh, something called the principal component analysis instead, which what which is a more um, more uh, more more accurate, more accurate. However, for that, okay, technique is very, very complicated. So that's why I find that, okay, if I do a very, um, not so, so um, accurate, or maybe have an assumption, okay, then correlation, uh, correlation analysis of Excel is, is good enough, okay, for you to, uh, to apply in your daily work. Because uh, although if, if I try to teach you PCA, I don't think you can apply it uh, to your workplace uh, immediately. However, if I teach you correlation analysis, you can apply it to your workplace immediately. Okay, this is my consideration. <laughs> okay, is it clear? This is very, very useful, okay? What next? Basically, this is, these are the steps, okay? I have already put it in the PDF file for you, okay? You can do revision, okay, by yourself. And what next? The next thing I would like to teach you is about the uh, time series data, okay? What is the meaning of time series data? Okay, in, in our daily life, okay, the time series data they, that uh, we frequently uh, face are the, uh, the value of the share markets. Okay, for example, if you have some investment, okay, in the share market, then you, you will day to day facing the time series analysis data all the time. What, what does it mean? If you are buying uh, the option of a, a hand sand index, okay, you, you will see the, the system line, right? Those are system line are time series data. Okay, if you would like to, okay, for cars, the hands-on index, okay, for tomorrow, okay, then what should you do? You need to, first of all, have the, uh, have the, to draw the uh, time series analysis graph and then do, to do some forecasting. Okay, this is the method, okay, that those are invest, uh, in, at uh, the iBanker do, okay, every day in their office. Okay, basically, okay, for today's session, okay, I just uh, teach you some very simple data, uh, time series analysis technique. Okay, with Microsoft Excel, if you apply it to do investment, I can't guarantee you can earn money from the share market. Okay, remember, okay, to to do a share a share market analysis. Okay, this is not covered. Okay, in our uh, in today's session. Okay, this is very very complicated because uh, we need to re uh, reduce the risk and we need to do so many so many calculation in to minimize the error the rescue, okay?
So first of all, okay, what should we do? Okay, let's have a look here. Okay, on the on this spreadsheet. Okay, the the fourth one. Okay, the Caus, Ca, uh, Caucasian trend line. Okay, here. So first of all, if you get this information, okay, this is this is the percentage and this is the year. Okay. If you would like to, okay, have a look, okay, on the trend of the of this data, then what should you do? Okay, most of the time we we'll, we we'll what we we'll, we we'll, we we'll need to just a, a chart, okay, to have an overview to this set of data. So what should I do? First of all, highlight this area first, and what next? Go to the insert menu. In the insert menu, okay. There are so many chart. Okay, for time series analysis, okay, we will apply only one chart. That chart is called the scatter. Okay, scatter. And then select scatter chart like this. Okay, basically this is the chain of this scatter chart. Okay, as you can see here, okay, here we can draw a straight line. Okay, here to across the nearly all the point here, and we can use a straight line that means the relationship of the year and the percentage is what is linear. Okay, however, if you would like to know, okay, how about if I draw the straight line across these lines? Okay, what's the equation for this straight line? Okay, how many of you still remember when you are still doing the secondary school course? Okay, you will learn a mathematics a topic called the coordinate geometry, right? Now today I will uh, I, I will I will do some revision on coordinate geometry with all of you, okay? Or else you can't you don't know my topic, okay? So okay, if you would like to know, okay, the line, okay, which will across most of the part, okay, of this uh, of this chart, then what should you do? Okay, first, okay, select one of the top line here, okay, and what next? Right click one of the point here. And then here you can see an option called what? Add trend line. After you click add trend line, can you see here? We have trend line options. Okay. Trend line options, we have trend regression type, we have exponential linear, logarithmic break, or the long new power moving average, so many, so many this kind of uh, formulas. Okay, then what should we apply? Okay, before we select the correct option. Okay, let me have uh, let me do some revision on coordinate geometry first. <laughs> okay, don't have faith. Okay, you just I just uh, do some revision. Okay, first, okay, I would like to come across is the linear curve. Okay, linear curve. Do you still remember this linear curve? And also the this the linear curves uh, equation, the linear equation. Okay, what's y and what is t? Basically, because I, as I, I, I mentioned before, this is what we so call the time series analysis. Okay. Most of the time, the X axis, I mean, the, the horizontal axis will call it as T. That means that what? The time. So that's why T represents the what? The horizontal axis. That means the X axis. That means that this value. Okay. From the T axis. And Y, what's the Y? Here is Y. Okay. Y axis and T axis here. So what's the relationship between the T and Y? We will sub substitute into this formula. Okay. What's the meaning of M? Do you still remember what is M? M is the slope of the curve. Do you still remember? M is the slope of the curve. And what's the value of C? C is what? C is the Y intercept. That means what's the value here to cut across the line with the Y, uh, y axis? That is what we so call C, the Y intercept. Okay, in view situation, okay, let me interpret it in this way. If the, in the view situation, if you find that the, uh, the, this is, this is a linear equation is what, for the what, is the uh, return of your investment. Okay, then what's, what's the meaning? Okay, Y is the return of your investment. And M is what? Is the rate. The, the what? The rate, the interest rate. Yeah, the rate. At the return rate. And C is what? The initial investment. The initial investment. For example, if they may want to open a green grocer, okay, the first time sum of money I invest to the green grocer, that is the what? The initial cost. Okay? Then, that lump sum of money will become C. And the what? The return, return rate, okay, the, the what? The, the, 
invest let's say return on investment yeah return on investment rates okay is what is m for example if every year i have a 10% uh, return then here m is a, a 10% will become the slope here like this okay this is what we so called the linear curve okay linear curve so maybe let me let me know more about what is linear okay so I complete this first, okay. First of all, okay, this is percent Caucasian, okay. And now I would like to try to use the linear curve, okay, to apply to the trend line. This is a linear. And now I will select the trend line name automatic, okay. And here I would like to do first is what? To ask the system to display the equation on chart and also to display the R square value on chart as well. Like this and click close. So what happened? As you can see here, you will see an equation and have and also have something called the R square value. Can you see this? Okay, what does it mean? If this equation show the what? Show your return on investment, okay, of your business, then it's a tragedy. You know why? First of all, okay. The initial value, okay, according to the information here, it can it can forecast, okay, in, at the very beginning you invest about uh, eight hundred seventy five dollar, okay, to your business. This is the initial value. That means that this one, this value is is what is the y intercept value, okay, the initial investment, okay, at the very beginning for your business. And now here is the slope. Slope is what negative point four. What does it mean? Your business depreciate every year by what? By by four uh, by forty percent. See, this is very serious. <laughs> okay, two point four, right? So this is what we so called the what? The linear equation. Okay, this is the slope, and this is the what? Y intercept. Of course, different chart will and uh, uh, substitute into this formula. Different value will have a different uh, different interpretation. I just have bring you a very simple new situation to let you know more about what is the meaning of slope and what is the meaning of y in the sum. Okay, but for negative, this is not so good. Negative that means what depreciate, something depreciate. Okay, the slope will become like this. Okay, this is not good. And now here was what the meaning for r square. R square basically is to what? To present, okay, how accurate for this trend line. Okay, for R square, what does it mean? If the value is 0 0.99, 0 0.99 that is equal to what? To 99%. That means what? Nearly 99% of this kind uh, this uh, dot line can what? Can put into this equation. What does it mean? That means if the that means the accuracy is at what? It's up to 99%. That means if the R square is larger, that means the accuracy for this trend line is what? More accurate. Is it clear? Okay, if R square become 1, what does it mean? 100%, no error. <laughs> All the points can substitute into this equation. Is it clear? That means the larger the R square, okay, okay. Let me have, a, have my hammer, okay? Uh, let me put on my hammer first, okay? <laughs> if, okay. For some simple analysis, the larger the R square is, the more accurate for the trend line is. However, in some situations, although the R square is quite very large, okay, it is not also not so accurate. Okay, but for most of the case, we were looking for a what? Larger R square value. If the R square value is tends to one, okay, that is very good. Okay, is it clear? Now, go to another. This is what I so called the linear curve. And the second one is what? The exponential curve. What does it mean by exponential curve? Okay, as you can see here, exponential curve is like this. Okay? And as you can see here, what's the difference between the what? Be between the linear curve and exponential curve. What's the difference? As you can see here. For linear curve is the what? We will have a steady what? A steady slope. The same slope, the constant slope, right? Okay, that means with the first year, okay, the slope is the same as the, the, the previous year, year, year. Okay, on the fourth year, okay, the previous year, we will have the same return of what? Of uh, uh, the same return, okay? Because we, we, we have the same slope, right? 
However, for what? For its potential curve, we will do it make a, 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 then it will become what? Different, quite different. Why? Why I say so? Can you see the formula here? This is what we so call the exponential curve. Assume, okay, this is what? This is the, the, the lump sum of money you put into your bank account. And here, what does it mean for, for this, uh, for, for this formula? 1 plus R, what does it mean? R is the what? It's the interest rate given by the bank to you. And T is what? The number of year. Basically, this is what? This is the formula for the what? Compound interest. Right? Can you see here? This is a ways for the compound interest. What does it mean? If you put, okay, $10 into your bank account, if the bank, okay, give you 10% interest, okay, each year, what does it mean? Then after 10 years, then you, 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 you need to what? Substitute into this formula. Okay, let me show you. Like this, okay. For example, initially, $10 you put into your, the, bank, the, the bank account, and the interest rate is 10%. After 10 years, what happened? Then what should you do? Equal to 10 times 1 plus 10% to the power 10 years. See what happened. If you put $10 into the bank account for 10 years and get the annual, uh, the, the annual interest rate is 10%, then finally you will got 25 Hong Kong dollar, finally. Okay, this is what we so call exponential curve. Okay, if you are doing some pieces which is what of what compound interest, that means the curve is exponential. Is it clear? But if you are a salesperson, then you will have a hard time. Why I say so? If your boss say, okay, I would like to have a ten percent increment for each uh, uh, for each year, then what does it mean? That means I would okay for this year okay I would like to have a ten percent increment okay compared with the previous year. Then what what does it mean? That means a one plus ten percent. And for the next year, okay, and your boss say okay I would like to have ten percent increment compared with the previous year. Then what does it mean? Again times one plus ten percent. Then it will become very very hard to beat the time target. Just like this person, okay. At the very beginning, okay, very easy to one. However, uh, when when the stock uh, become deeper and deeper, finally very hard to get up, okay, to the hill. Can you see here? So it's called tensile curve, okay. In nature, this is the far that uh, it is the quickest curve that uh, uh, appear in the nature, okay. According to my my knowledge, okay. <laughs> This is the quickest way. So exponential curve, okay, that means okay, if you have a steady increment, okay, each year, then will uh, 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 sorry, uh, stand, uh, standard standard uh, uh, have a increment, okay, compared with uh, the previous year, then what we got, got finally is the expo exponential curve, okay. So what you can see here is like this, okay. Let's have a look, okay, on this equation. The CAGR tab, okay? Please turn to the CAGR tab here first, okay? First of all, okay, here it will show you the what? The cells, okay, median, like this. Okay, first of all, here, okay, on the left hand side, it will show you the year 1990, 1991, 1992, 1993, something like that. And here, for more convenient, I will turn it, okay, simple to what? Year 1, year 2, year 3, and year 10. Okay? Because I would like to make the equation more simple. Here. So I simply convert it from 1990, something like that, okay, to year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, till 10. Okay? So what happened? I would like to, okay, know the formula, okay, for this set of data, then what should I do? First of all, do what? Highlight this area again. And then go to the what? Go to the insert. And skater, here it got skater like this, right? According to our mathematics knowledge, okay, the shape like what? Exponential curve, right? So what should I do? See that one of the stop, uh, one of the uh, uh, pawn here, right? Cake at China. What happened? I will see that exponential. See what happened? See? It will come across most of the pawn, right? And also, I would like to know the equation of the chart 
and also the L square S again. So after that, close. See what happened. This is the equation. And the L square, the L square value, what does it mean? 98% of pawn can fit into this equation. See? So what happened? Okay, now what we got here is this equation in this format. Okay, 55.55 times exponential to the power of 0 0.5694 times x. Very complicated because of this kind of notation. Only a scientists will know how to interpret it. However, for layman people like me, okay, what should I do? Okay? So what should I do? Okay, if I would like to know, okay, the annual return weight, then what should I do? So that's why I will have this page, okay, to teach you to calculate the compound annual growth rate. Okay, so what should you do? Okay, first of all, okay, we need to first of all have a look on the equation again, okay, here is what? Okay, 55.553, okay, here for cast equal to 58.553. Times exponential exp zero point five six nine four times year like this. Okay, because according to the what to the uh, the Excel, okay, it will give give us this exponential equation, right? Right. This is an exponential equation, right? So I just want to type this formula 55 by 58.553 times exponential EXP times exponential 0 0.5694 Just copy it and times B4 because the value, okay, the value the given to the to, to this equation to do for casting is from this column here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 10, right? So what happened? Enter then we'll forecast, okay, the first forecast is like this, 100 something. We just a simply check and drop, okay, to this column. So what happened? We will got something like this. Okay, the first year, okay, originally, okay, the actual value is 70. However, for forecast with the equation is 100 something. And the second year is 183, 182. Quite, quite close, right? So I think, okay, the forecast and the, and the, and the actual value is quite close together. Okay, the error is so, it's not that much. So what next? Out here, I would like to calculate the compound and the growth rate. Then what should I do? Simple. Just type equal, equal to what? This value, this year's value, divide by previous year's value. Then you will see, okay, this is 1.76 and just a simple check and jump to the end of the table. You can see we will have a steady growth rate by what? 76%. 76%. Why I say 76% not 176%? The reason why? Because according to this formula, right? 1 plus something. This is the what? The compound annual, uh, the annual compound interest rate, right? And R, we just uh, simply minus it by one. That means it's zero point at point, at point seven six. What does it mean? That means the growth rate per annual is what seventy six percent. Can you see here? That means okay. If you find that okay, the growth rate okay for this business is what is the trend tends to exponential, then you need to first of all to ask what. Ask the uh, ask Excel, okay, use the scale, use the China to get the formula. And then use the get the formula to do the forecasting like this. And then use what? To to do division, okay? For the recent year, recent year, okay, divided by the previous year. According to this to calculate the compound annual and growth rate, like this. This set of data is come from a company, American company called Amazon. Yeah. 
so that's why you can see the growth of Amazon is like this exponential. And also in China, also have another company like this growth. Do you know which company in China like this? Tencent, Tencent, Tencent. It's okay. 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 Basically, the exponential curve and the uh, linear curve is the two most important curve. Okay, in doing forecasting, be honest. Because uh, for uh, for my uh, research topic is about the uh, H uh, the the harmful age booming. Okay, because for the for those uh, um, my uh, so um. But in the in the biological world, okay, most of most of the germs and algae and bacteria are grow in this exponential way. So that's why this exponential curve will most probably apply in science area. Okay, and actually, okay, another curve I need to mention is logarithmic curve. Basically, this is an is the countryside of exponential curve. Okay, for um for exponential curve, what does it mean? That means they, they will have a steady way of what growth for each year. However, for a logarithmic curve, what does it mean? You will have a steady depreciation each year. It will become logarithmic curve. Can you see here? Okay. That means finally, okay, at the end of the day, okay, the, the curve will become fat. What does it mean? That means uh, no business at all. <laughs> okay. This is logarithmic curve, okay? We don't want to see, okay, any business will show a logarithmic uh, curve, okay, because this is very, very bad situation, okay? This is logarithmic. If you, if, okay, uh, if you, you find that, okay, uh, only logarithmic curve, okay, can represent the business, okay, then I do say, I, I would say, I'm so sorry, okay? Okay, like this. We've got logarithmic curve here. See? Okay. However, for logarithmic curve, okay, it, it, this is the first curve I would like to introduce to you. And and other curve also very commonly used to do forecasting. That is what is so-called the polynomial. However, for polynomial, what is so-called this kind of polynomial is not so strong relationship. Okay, actually for strong relationship, uh, uh curve relationship is the linear curve. The second strongest is the and logarithmic. And the third one, okay, if we really want to apply to fit in your uh, uh, fit in the curve you do forecasting, polynomial is the first choice. However, I seldom recommend people use the polynomial curve to fit in your data because uh, basically this is not so accurate. This is not so accurate because uh, we still have uh, so many things to consider. So this part, okay, only teach you to uh, uh, as a what is a reference. Don't apply it if you real data. Okay, what you used to do is uh, what linear curve, exponential curve, what logarithmic. Of course, logarithmic in your business. Okay. Okay, and the third one is what is so called the moving average curve. Okay, this one is quite frequently used in uh in share market in the news report. Okay, why I say so? Okay. How many of you do some investment in the in Hong Kong share market? Please raise up your hand. No? Wow, don't be so shy, okay? Actually, if you okay, because I uh, in uh in the news report always say that uh they have some analytic that that is what we what we so called the uh fifty uh fifty four weeks moving average value have something called something like this, okay? In Chinese it's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone Anyone of you heard about it from the list report? 54 weeks moving average value. Okay? What does it mean? Do you know what does it mean? That means, okay, for example, what is moving average? Let me let me tell you. If okay, uh the share the the when you say if the share market is uh, more than the fifty-four Moving uh, 54 weeks moving average value. What does it mean? The 54 weeks moving average value will calculate in this manner. Okay, all together, all the 50 weeks, okay, and uh, share share value will add together and divided by 54. This is what we so call 50 book week and 54 weeks average value. 50 weeks, okay. Most most of the time, 
those entities, okay, those are share entities in Hong Kong today. If the share is more than the 54 which will be added value, then you should put more money to investment on that company. However, this kind of analysis is so quick, okay, so easy, okay, because it's not so tough and so, so realistic. Just uh, if you, you believe on the 54 weeks moving average value, I think you are you just a simply go to the account to do investment in the game and in the in the in the in the yeah. No difference. No difference. Okay? But if you really want to apply the uh, moving average uh, moving average analysis, okay, to do investment, I can tell you like this. Here, we still have the moving average. Can you see this? Yeah, that means if you would like to uh, do analysis, to do investment according to the moving average, you can make use of this uh, this uh, this trend line as well. Okay. But this one, okay, according to the uh, information here, okay, the period can only up to four. Okay, the period can only up to four. If you would like to uh, generate those uh, analysis for fifty-four bit, okay, I can't see you can do it with this function. Okay. Is it here? Is it here? This is what we so call the edge chain now, like this. Now, again, okay, we have uh, something called the home one data, right? Home one data. Okay, basically, okay. Just a simply do a revision. I would like to uh, uh, like you to make a trend line to forecast the home one, okay, for a certain team. Okay, from 1965 till to a uh, year 2000, as I can remember. Yes, uh, 2014. Okay, so what should we do? How to do it? How to how to how to generate a uh, trend line to forecast the home one percentage? How to do it? First of all, how to do it? Just simply highlight this column two column. And then what next? Go to insert, skater, skater again. And then what you get here is like this, right? As you can, as you can see here, what does it mean? Well, what should we do? First of all, select one of the points. What next is right click. And then do the add trend line. And out here, okay, let me show you something. Okay, first of all, okay, most of the time I would like to select these two chat box first. First of all, is the what? Is the, the equation. And the second thing is the what? Is the uh, R square value, right? Now, what next? Okay, I would like to try the exponential. Okay, first of all, okay, linear, the R square value is what? Is zero point five. What does it mean? Fifty percent only. That means it is not so accurate. Okay. If we choose its potential, also fifty one percent. How about logarithmic? Fifty per two percent seems better. Okay. However, if we choose what polynomial, see polynomial, we have what we have. Uh, this line is zero point five two. However, if we increase the order. All the three, all the four, all the five, C, all the six. Okay, up to all the six, what happened? The L square value will become what? More accurate and higher. Can you see this? What does it mean? That means if we we would like to forecast a home one. Okay, according to the information here, according to the R square here, we should select polynomial with a higher order, okay, to forecast the home percentage. It, it, it becomes back better. Can you see this? However, if we, we if, if you really want to apply polynomial to do the uh, trend line, to do the forecasting, I can tell you one thing that is, this kind of forecasting is not so strong. Because of this kind of uh, uh, for, uh, forecasting, we still need to do so many things, okay, to reduce the uh, error uh, in, uh, to, in doing the estimation or uh, uh, in order to have a more accurate forecasting. However, if you, you find that, okay, you would like to have a rough idea, okay, to do the forecasting, then you should apply polynomial in this case, okay? But polynomial is not suggest, 
okay, or the law is not not suggest, okay, uh, in my point of view, because the thesis is not so uh, so so strong, okay, as you can see here, okay, that's why, okay, if you would like to do forecasting, I would like you to first of all what to enable the display equation on chart and display R square value first. And then according to the R square value, okay, to select the pop part, okay, uh, the trend regression type here. Okay? It's a much it's a much much more easier for you to get a, a, a better forecasting with the channel. You see here? It's okay? I have already um, skipped quite a lot of mathematical concepts and mathematical equations, okay? Because uh, I, what, I, what I would like to teach you here is the tools at Excel, okay? Rather than some data analytic mathematical concept, okay? I just uh, tell you, okay, how to how to interpret those uh, values, okay? To make the things simpler, okay? Okay, now... This is what I don't want to come across, but this is also very important. Okay? This is about the bias analysis. Bias analysis. Okay, what is the meaning of bias? Okay? Bias, what does it mean? For example, okay, uh, if the weather is keeping very hot, very hot, okay, all the time, what does it mean? Okay, if you're, you are doing an uh, ice cream business, then what, 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 what you got is what? Have a high revenue, okay, from selling the ice cream. However, the same product, if you move to a what, to a cold area, then the revenue will become different, right? The reason why you have a high sell, a high, high value of revenue in, in, in hot and raw area, because of the, because of the weather, and people would like to eat more ice cream. This kind of uh, effect is coming from the what, from the bias, because, because of the weather, right? This is what we so-called the bias, okay? Okay, anyway. Before, okay, we will have a, a deep investigation on what is bias, okay, I would like to introduce a, quite a, some a statistic uh, measurement on error first, okay. First of all, okay, as you can see here for the bias analysis tab here, we have a two different rows, okay, from a, a, column A and column B. Column A is the forecast value and the for, column B is the actual value, okay. If you, okay, first thing I would like to introduce to you is about the error. What's the mean by error? Error is simply like this, equal to the what? Just uh, use the actual value minus the forecast value. Let's say, okay, we have a forecast method, okay, to forecast the actual value. However, this is the forecast value here, and the actual value becomes 76. Then we need to measure, okay, what is the difference between the forecast value and the actual value? This is what we so call the error. And the error is calculated from the actual value minus the forecast value, like this. This is what we so call the error. And now, what should I do? Is to just such a simple jet and drop across the column, like this. However, if you we use the error, is it so accurate? Not so accurate. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, what guys? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have something wrong. Okay. Equal to this one minus. This one, A4. Uh, sorry, I I I got the one one answer. Sorry, like this. This one is correct. <laughs> okay, actual value minus the forecast value. Okay, but is it is it useful? Okay, for us for the error like this, I don't think so. Because why? Because okay, out here we got what negative. 7.5, let it give four at 17. What does it mean? That means we still have error. However, that error doesn't doesn't make sense. What the, what is the meaning for negative? Okay, because error is error. And what does it mean by error? Error that means okay, we still have uh, some room okay in between the actual value and forecast value. For more a uh, more accurate uh, representation, we will do one more thing. That is what we so called the absolute error. What does it mean? That means we apply a formula called absolute. Absolute return every negative value into positive value. Okay, this is what we so call the absolute. So after we apply this formula, absolute C2, what we get here is like this. All the negative value will become positive. 
like this. So most of the time, if people would like to see the differences between two values, we would like to have a look on the absolute error rather than the error that we have. Okay. However, this is also meaningless for absolute value for some time. Why? Because if the value, if the for actual value is not large, so large, if the absolute error is 26.5, then it is all this is already very, very serious error. Because what? The actual value is only what? 76. And the absolute er error is what? It's 26.5. It is all it is already very, very serious. However, if the error still set at seven, uh, sorry, twenty six point five, if the actual value is one thousand, then this is another story, right? So that's why we have an under measurement for the error. What well, this is the absolute percentage error. How to calculate it? Simple. Just simply use the absolute error and divide by the what by the actual value. What we got here is the percentage. Here is thirty three. By 34.87%, then just a simple jet and drop to the end of the table, like this. Okay? This is what we so call the absolute percentage error. Okay, in in those uh, scientists area, okay, for, for those uh, scientists, okay, if they would like to do some analysis, okay, most of the time they don't want to use the absolute error and absolute percentage error. Most of the time, the absolute error and absolute percentage error are frequently used in those uh, piece, uh, for those uh, pieces. Okay. However, for square error, it is uh, uh, in in the uh, scientist and uh, uh, sorry in the in the scientist uh, perspective. Okay, they like to use it. Okay, so I just had a couple of calls. Okay, what is square error? Square error is very simple. Just simply use the error and the power to just like this. The reason they why they they like to use the square error is because after square the error, no matter that is negative or positive, it will become positive. <laughs> this is their own way. That, that that that's the that's why they like to use something called the square error. Okay, because uh, those scientists don't want to what want to eliminate the negative sign. Okay, doing the calculation, so they would like to uh, just uh, simply you uh, uh, square the error. Okay, by giving a what the power two like this, and also for absolute, we cannot uh, 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 be if we in solving some equation, if you find the absolute sign, it is very difficult to solve it. So instead of uh, have a, a quite difficult uh, and a difficult uh, technique applied to solve the uh, absolute side of the equation, we uh, we will rather like to use the square. Okay, instead in science uh, in science perspectives. Okay, but this one you can eliminate it. Okay, because in for businessmen, most of the time you will use the absolute uh, the percentage error and absolute error. And now the last one is very important. It's something called the bias. Bias. Okay. So how to calculate the bias? Ah, uh, okay. The formula has already been uh, has has already been print okay on top of the column. Okay, very simple. Just simply use the actual value divided by the forecast value and then minus one. That's it. This is what we so called the bias. Okay, I will I will show you graphically what is bias. Okay, can you see this? This is what we so called the bias. It's here. Okay, so and first, okay. Now, okay, let me show you something graphically first. Okay, I'll highlight. The first two columns. One is the what? The actual and one is the forecast. And then what next is to insert a scatter chart here. Wow. Okay. I don't want to show in this manner. Ah uh, this is not so good. Okay. I will show you uh, in the uh, in next example, okay, what is bias. Okay. Actually, okay, after we calculate this 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 kind of things, okay. So what next here? We have some uh, calculation. Okay, for those 
highlight yellow in color, I will uh, I will skip it in uh, today's session because uh, this is a little bit uh, quite uh, difficult to you. Okay, especially if I would uh, I would like to mention something called the ninety five percent significance. Okay, maybe maybe if you are you are not doing study in uh, statistic, I think it is quite difficult for you to understand. Okay, I will try to use another example to let you know more about what is the significance. Okay. So, okay, first of all, okay, I would like to teach you what is the, about the mean FH deviation. Mean FH deviation. Mean FH deviation is very simple. Just calculate the average value of what? On the error. This is what we so-called the mean FH deviation. If I would like to have the mean FH percentage error, also very simple. Okay, this is commonly used. Okay, in the business analysis, uh, analysis uh, environment. Okay, this is what we so call the mean FH percentage error. MAPE. Okay, and sum of square is SSE. Also very simple. Sum. Just use the square error, come across the square error here, and then this is the result. Okay, as you can see here, okay, this is the mean FH percentage error. Okay, most of the time, businessmen like to uh, like to have a note on this one. Mean FH percentage error. If the percentage error is 29 point something, wow, the error is quite serious, right? It's very, very serious. What does it mean? It means, okay, we'll have a quite a large error if we use that forecasting method to forecast the uh, actual value, okay? However, if the error is very high, okay, does it mean the forecasting is not accurate? That's, okay, the question is no. The reason why? Because uh, we still need to have a look on the mean F bias. Okay, mean bias, very simple. Use the FH formula. To calculate the bias. See what happened. The B minus, the mean bias, which is what? Very closely close to what? To zero. It's very close to zero. What does it mean? The means, okay, if we put, okay, uh, a line, which is for what? Uh, let me let me show you. I would like to draw something first. Uh, P bush. For example, okay, what does it mean by bias is a, a close to zero? Okay, first of all, okay, for forecasting, okay, we will have a straight line, right? Okay, this is for the forecast value, okay? However, if, okay, we have a bias, okay, the bias is always what? Positive. Which is larger than, uh, which is uh, larger than zero, uh, larger than zero is a uh, quite a large positive value. What does it mean? That means that uh, most of the point, okay, will distribute it, okay, uh, on the upper part, so around the upper part of the line of the forecast value. This is what we so call the bias is what is uh, larger than zero. If the bias, the mean bias is what is uh, less than zero, that means what is negative. If the mean bias, the average bias is less than zero, what does it mean? That means that most of the point will what? Will, will distribute under the forecast line, like this. However, if you find that those error, that means that those old bounder, okay, which is what? Evenly distributed on top of the line and below the line, what does it mean? The bias will become, the mean bias will become what? Quite close to zero. Is it clear? So, if either the, the, the value, but I mean bias value is large or very small, that means we have what? Bias. However, if it is close to what? Close to zero, what does that mean? That means, okay, although we still have uh, some error, however, it is evenly distributed, okay, along the whole line. Then we can still accept the forecasting. Is it okay? Hello? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> is it difficult to imagine? 
I've already skipped so uh, quite a lot of mathematical concepts. Okay, I just uh, drawing, drawing all the time. Is it okay? Okay, is it clear? Is it clear? So this one is very it is important. Okay, this one is important. Okay, this part. So if you're so still not so clear, I think you better go uh, go back to your seat and then to have a revision of the video clip. Okay, very simple. Okay, now. Okay. Uh, how do you interpret the sort of square error? Square error? But does this mean large or small? How do you interpret that? Basically, okay, for the square error, okay, we, 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 practically, okay, the reason why we have square error, as I, as I mentioned before, for those scientists, they would like to have a square error. Because in solving the equation, if you use the absolute sign, you need to divide the value into greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to zero. We need to divide it into two different perspectives to solve the equation, which is very difficult. However, we, if we just uh, turn it into a square error, just simply a, a square, a, a give a, a power two, okay, to the equation. For the scientist's perspective, okay, this is much more easier for, uh, for what? To solve the equation. The, okay, how to measure the square error? It is meaningless for science perspective. I just want to let you know, okay, for scientists, they would like to use the square error instead. But the reason why they use the square error is for, is for easier to solve the equation. Yeah. If you are not using it for solving equation, it's meaningless. So that's why I say it's meaningless for those businessmen. Because of, for business people, they would, they just want to what interpret some interpret some information from the value. But for science, scientists, the broad point of view, they will enjoy to what to solving the, the equation and, uh, and enjoy the steps. So that's why we have we have a different perspective. Okay, that's the, the that's the that's the problem. That's the issue. Okay. You're correct. Meaningless <laughs> at this moment. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Now, next. Okay. For this one, the same thing. Okay. Cosesian percentage, something like that. Okay. See, actually, the same example. But now I would like to have um, some more error analysis, okay, for this set of data. Okay, first of all, okay, we would like to what to to formulate the formula first. First of all, highlight this area, and then data. I oh, no, data insert and scatter again, and here of course, select one of the pawn, right click, okay, at channel nine. Now again, linear, display equation, display R squared value on chart, like this. Like this, okay? Okay. So first of all, I would like to calculate the error. I would like to calculate the error. Error. Calculate the error. So how to calculate the error? Okay, for each year. How to calculate it? Simple, because we have already got the equation, okay, from the chart. So what should I do? Equal to, this one is the actual value, minus bracket negative 0 0.4 times year plus 87.5.6 close bracket, like this. 0 0.4 Check, 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 like this. This is what we so-called the error. This is the error. Okay. However, okay. How about the standard error? How about the standard error for the forecasting? Okay, actually, what is the standard error? Very difficult to explain, uh. <laughs> Okay? But that is very important, uh. hmm. Okay, let me show you what is the standard error, okay? Basically, okay. <sighs> okay, uh, okay. I, I, let me explain in this way, okay? 
Do you have any idea what it is? Hmm. Okay, how many of you study statistics before? Okay, good. That's very good. This is basically the, uh, the distribution, right? The normal distribution. Okay. If we... Uh, that's very good. Okay. If... Okay, we have a mean here. Okay. We will calculate something called the standard deviation, right? Standard deviation. One standard deviation, okay, apart from the mean, what does it mean? Altogether, if we fit the one standard deviation area, that means that this area will cover 68%, okay, of the of the uh, statistic data over here, right? If, okay, we will cover up towards two standard deviation, that means that altogether here, four standard deviation, what, what does it mean? It will cover all uh, 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 the statistic data at uh, nearly 95%, is it right? If, Altogether, okay, fee standard deviation here and fee standard deviation all together, six, six standard deviation, we will cover 99.7%, okay, statistical data within this area. Okay, this is what we so call the what? The distribution, okay, and this one is the normal distribution. Is it clear? Okay, revision, that's very good, okay. Now, however, if I say, okay, I would like to, okay, to cover the as much, as much data as possible, okay, it is impossible. The reason why, we still have error. So, for now, this business, okay, most of the time, we will cover 95% only. What does it mean? That means we will, we will cover up to two standard deviation only. Is it clear? That means left, uh, left hand side, two standard deviation, and right hand side, two standard deviation, all together, four standard deviation. Is it clear? Hi, hi. <laughs> is it here? It's here. That means, okay, the business standard is 95%, right? That means we'll cover what? 90, uh, two standard deviation on the left hand side and two standard deviation on the right hand side. Is it here? Because we just uh, simply convert percentage into standard deviation as a unit. Is it here? For 90% is equivalent to what? Four standard deviation. Left and right. If if 99.7, what does it mean? Six standard deviation. So that's why in hot, in, 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 the, uh, in, in logistics, we will have a, something called the six sigma. What does it mean? Six sigma that means our, our, our standard will up to what? 99.7%. The accuracy. That means a nearly low error. Okay? Is it clear? So, that's very good. Most of you has already come across why you start statistic. Okay, that's great. Okay, now, what I'm going to Talking about is about the what? About the error. Okay? If, okay, here we have already calculated the error here. Okay? But I would like to, okay, the error will come across, okay? 95% uh, of the error will already cover and cater. What does it mean? That means we need to do the calculation is what? It's two standard error. Okay, for each side, all together, four standard deviation, right? For the error. However, if we, we convert the standard error, then what should I do? We need to first of all to calculate error and then to calculate the standard deviation, something like that. So complicated, right? Is it clear? Hi. Do, do, do you know what, what I mean? Okay, because if we like to calculate the standard deviation of the error, it is very complicated. Okay, so for Microsoft Excel, they know our difficulty. So they create a, a formula called STEYX. That is standard error for what? For forecasting, that means. Okay? Okay, because of a standard error for forecasting, so what should I do? Very simple. How to calculate the standard error? It's equal to, equal to STEYX. And then very simple. First of all, input the Y series into it, comma, and then here input the X series. That means the look at the year parameter, and then close bracket enter. Then you will got the standard error is zero point sixty uh, zero point six three like this. Very simple. Just a substitute. Okay, all the X value and Y value into the formula. Then you can find the standard error. Okay, this is what we so called the standard error. Okay, one standard deviation is 0 0.63 for the error. Is it here? But the magic is why we, we, we want to calculate this way. If, okay, David, this is not so complicated to calculate the standard deviation for the error. We may just simply use like this, equal to standard 
deviation. Okay, use the sample. Okay, and highlight this to do calculation. Should be okay, right? However, can you see this? If you calculate the sample standard deviation for, for this uh, data, then finally what we got is 0.54. Wow, well, quite different from the 0.63. The reason why, do you have any idea? If you study a time series analysis, you will know another perspective. Okay, because the if you use the standard deviation formula here, okay. Okay, any one of you know what is degree of freedom in statistics? If no, I will let it. <laughs> okay, because of this formula for standard deviation S, okay, this one is also very good already. However, the degree of freedom, they just achieve as one. However, for, for a chart like this, we have the degree of freedom is what? Y axis and X axis. The degree of freedom is Q. So this formula is wrong. Okay, so that's why if you would like to calculate the standard deviation for the forecasting, you use the to use STEYX, this formula instead. Let me show you again the formula for STEYX. Can you see this? Because the degree of freedom for STEYX is 2. So that's why the here is to divide by what? N minus 2 instead of N minus 1. If the degree of freedom is 1, then it's N minus 1. If the degree of freedom is zero, what does it mean? That means it's, that's, that, uh, the calculation is for the expected value. Then it's the simple n minus zero. However, for this is a linear equation, we have we will have an x and y axis. That means altogether the degree of freedom is two. So that's why here we got n minus two. That's why if you don't want to uh, remember the, the this complicated formula, just simply remember what s t e y x. Okay, the we okay, my conclusion is okay, forget this formula. Just remember S T E Y X to calculate the standard error. Is it clear? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> because I, I I come across quite a lot of mathematical equation, but I would like to let you know more about why I would like to teach you these tools. Because these tools are really, really convenient for you and lonely to memorize all the stuff, okay, in doing the calculation. Okay. The reason why I would like to come across this equation, ah, uh, important, uh, just wait a minute. Hey, come on, here. Okay, this is very simple, okay? However, if we come across, okay, a another formula here like this. Now, I would like to uh, formulate a, a equation an equation. So what should I do? Okay, I would like to like you first of all to do one thing. Use this three column, okay, to formulate a scatter chart first. What should I do? Here and here. Highlight this three column and then use insert and scape and select this one. What happened? Okay, we got this. We got this, right? Don't do anything, ah. Don't do anything. Okay, just have a look on this equation. Okay. Okay, no need to mention. Okay, first of all, okay, HR, that means the blue in color, the home run data, the blue in color stock. Okay, these data are from what? From actual value, right? And for this, okay, orange in color value is from what? From, from the forecasting method. Okay? Okay, according to your observation here, do you think there is some, uh, the, how, uh, what is the value for the mean bias? According to your observation here, no need to do calculation. Because you find that, okay, those stock box here is more than what? Those stock here. I can assume, okay, the bias should be what? Should be larger than zero. And the mean bias should be positive. But not of a high positive value. The reason why? Because of really evenly distributed. However, okay, be honest, according to my observation, should be more dot here on top of the line. So the mean bar should be larger than zero. Okay? And what second is, okay, now I would like to calculate what? Calculate the, the error between the forecast value and the actual value. Okay? So what should I do? Okay, that means, okay, I will calculate the error for each dot, 
from here to this line, from here to this line, from here to this line, right? So what should I do? Here, calculate the error. How to calculate the error? Equal to 0 0.1 actual value minus the forecast value. Here is the error. Hey, highlight it. Come across here. Got this. This is what we so-called the error, right? For each value, okay, each year. And if you would like to calculate the standard error for the forecasting, then what should you do? Here, here, equal to STEYX, okay? First of all, input the Y value, okay? Okay, remember, the Y value is, is what? Is the actual value, not the forecasting value, huh? okay? Actual value here, comma, and also input the X value, is the year. Like this. And then what we got here is the standard error. The standard error is 0 0.11. Okay, 0 0.11. And the error is what come across here is this. Okay? Now, what happened? What happened? Okay. Again, I would like to show you this chart. Again. This is our longer distribution. Okay, what should I do? Okay, because I, I have already got what? Got the standard deviation for the error, right? And now I would like to cover those information in between the central 95%. What does it mean? That means uh, come across those values, which is what? Which is in between minus two standard deviation and two standard deviation, right? That means these two areas. If those error which is larger than okay the, uh, uh, larger than uh, this minus two two uh, standard deviation and two standard deviation what does it mean that means they are four apart okay outside this area that means that they are belongs to what that part five percent like outliers is it is it clear because uh, we, we would like to okay centralized okay we will all want to consolidate okay those data which are in between the, the, the central 95 percent okay the outbound five percent we will, we will simply what eliminate that because of those data may be not accurate maybe have a so serious error okay we will call those data as an outbounder or outliers is it clear so what should i do so after we calculate this value Okay, this is the standard deviation for the error. Okay, 0 0.11, uh, 0 v to 1, and with the, uh, with the degree of freedom 2. Okay, because this is the xy dimension, right? So what should I do? Out here, I would like to have an if and if equation here to uh, to calculate, to check whether this error is outlier or not. So what should I do? Here, time and formula called if. If what? If here I use an or equation as well. If this value is larger than or equal to two times this value, okay, I need to use the F4, okay, to have log to, uh, to, to give it a absolute reference here like this. Or this value is less than or equal to negative 2 times this value. Give a dollar sign. If it is what, what, what? Outside the 2 standard deviation, left hand side, and 2 standard deviation, uh, uh, right hand side, what should I do? I give a mark here. Say they are outliers. If no, type nothing. Just like this. See what happens. What, what is the relationship for all? Or that means either one 
one other one condition is 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 meet that we will give a main outlier. That means if this error is larger than or equal to two standard error, okay, then we, we call it as outlier. Or the the value is what is less than or equal to negative two standard error, then we also call it as a outlier. If which which is not in between this area, then what should I do? Type nothing. See here. So what happened? Just type P's equation and then call PD's equation, control C, a sheet to the end of this table, and control V. See what happened. See how many out outline here? How many? We got only two. Okay, one is here. And the other one is here. One is in nineteen eighty seven and the other one is in two thousand, year two thousand. Can you see this? Co is outlier. Then what does it mean? Outlier. That means that which is what? Have a quite a large error. Okay, that we cannot accept, which is a larger than ninety five percent uh limited uh, uh, significancy. So let's have a note. Okay, the first outlier is nineteen eighty seven. Nineteen eighty seven. Okay, nineteen eighty seven should be this one. See, this one is nineteen eighty seven. Quite far apart from the from, from, from the forecast value. See here. Okay. This one is 1987. Okay? Okay. And the other one is in what? Year 2000. Let me have a look. Okay. Year 2000. Just to see if you have a note. Year 2000 should be this one. Right? Also quite far apart from the forecast value. See? As you can see here. Okay, this is what we so call, okay, because of our uh, doing statistics, this is what we so call the data cleansing. Okay, because according to my professor's requirement, if I don't I don't do any data cleansing, he will build my assignment. <laughs> okay, this is very important. Okay, remember we if you, you are doing some uh, data analysis, remember, okay, you need to identify which data are outliers. And then just simply omit those uh, outlier, uh, outliers uh, uh, information and then to do the forecasting. Okay, this is what you need to do. Okay, actually. That's why I that's that's why although that the concept is very very abstract, I also need you know okay what is standard deviation, what is 95% distribution, and how to calculate the standard error with this equation S T E Y X. That's the reason. This is very important. Okay? Or else, your forecasting must be has has more uh, quite a lot uh, uh, misleading information. Okay, this is very important. Ninety five percent is equal to what? Four standard deviation. Remember, at least after today's session, you need to bear in mind. Okay, according to normal distribution, okay, ninety five percent is equivalent to what? Four standard deviation. Okay, even though you wake up in the midnight, okay, you you still need to remember ninety five percent equal to four standard deviation. Okay. <laughs> This is very important. This is common practice. Okay, is it here? It's here. Okay. Now, the most important and most uh, what can I say? Okay. okay. This okay. Is it okay? Okay. For those are simple, uh, simple forecasting. Okay, for year and sales, something like that. Okay, most probably, I think in uh, in the end phone, oh, most of the time your work is what using the year, uh, season, uh, to forecast the sales uh, and revenue, something like that, right? If uh, the uh, the forecasting is very simple, only have a two factor, year and revenue. Okay, you can apply those uh, equation linear, uh, linear relationship, uh, exponential relationship, logarithmic <laughs> relationship, polynomial relationship, something like that. And also, you can do some error analysis. Okay, to eliminate those uh, outliers information, right? However, in our XTS, we have uh, so many, so many fruitful information, right? We have uh, some season data, uh, customer data uh, for each record. 
okay, which item and also the unit price cost something like that. We have so many so many factor, okay, and uh, to affect our revenue, right? In XTS, if we have a uh, quite a lot of factor, not like this, okay, the previous things, okay, we have only on, uh, only got the two factor, year time or the revenue, something like that. That one is very simple. However, if the uh, the factors is more than one or two, then what should I do? Then I will introduce uh, something called the regression method, okay, in, in Microsoft itself, okay, to let you know more about it. Okay, have a look on this set of data first. I have already prepared this set of data already, okay. Basically, this uh, set of data is uh, to stimulate a uh, trading company, okay, uh, on forecasting their sales, okay. Okay, this the trading company is not me and form, okay. <laughs> I will not use a view data in my in my uh, in my in my training session. Uh, okay, okay. For example, okay, here is those data in the year nineteen seventy nine. Okay, for sim simplification, okay, I just uh, simply record it, it as what seventy nineteen seventy nine. Here is the quarter one two v four one two v four. This is very simple to re record the quarter information as well. And here I have something called the quarters. Okay, the quarters is for what. And, and 1979, okay, the quarter one is quarter one. And for the 19, 19, uh, 1981, okay, the quarter is quarter nine. Okay, I just uh, convert it into quarters, okay, to, to simplify, my, uh, simplify my calculation. And here is the sales, okay, in median, okay, in median. The so sales, and here the GMP, okay, global election, something like that. And un unemployment rate, and some internal factors, and here, is it here? I, I got these pieces of information. Uh, internal, uh, internal index, and here is an employment rate, GMP value, and sales, quarters, and years. Okay, we have uh, these pieces of information. We would like to check whether the sales, okay, is affected by the GMP and the employment rate and, and, and uh, internal factor and the, and the quarters. Okay, so how to do the analysis? How to do the analysis? This is very interesting topic, okay? Because uh, according to the previous example, all these e uh, examples can be can be uh, simulated by a two-dimensional mathematical model, x and y axis. However, for this one, altogether, how many uh, dimensions we got? One, two, three, four, five. Five dimensions altogether, which is which is what we cannot feel in the actual world, actual universe. Because our actual universe, we got only four dimensions. And this, this one has a five dimension. What does it mean? That means that we need Einstein to solve this equation. <laughs> right? <laughs> However, if you really want to solve this equation, what should we do? We have some method called regression. Okay, in mathematics, which is a very high level analysis method. Okay, in in those uh, professionals, we will not use Microsoft Excel to solve this kind of problem. We will use a program called SAS. S A S. Have you heard about it? SAS. Okay. Most of the time, we will use the SAS. Use something called the Arima model to do the analysis. However, for Microsoft Excel, we cannot apply the Arima model to do the calculation because this is very very complicated. Okay. Very very uh, complicated. Uh, very, very very difficult. So what should I do? Let's have a look. First of all, I need to simplify, okay, those data, okay, into this one, two, three, four, five, six data, okay, to, okay, to see whether this one, two, three, four, five, six data will, will, will matter the sales and the revenue of this company. So, what should I do? Okay, first of all, why I will have Q1, Q2, and Q3 here? Why? Because uh, I would like to what to put this column, okay. If this is quarter one, then I will have a, a one here. If this is quarter two, we will have a one here. If this is quarter three, we will have a one here. Okay. So what should I do? Let me show you. Equal to if here the quarter is equal to one, then we have one here, or else we have zero. And here, if this value is equal to 2, if so, then it's 1, or else it's 0. If this value 
is equal to 3, then 1, or else 0. So, just see we have a log. Let me show you something. If we continue to check and drop this equation here, what happened? Okay? If this is quarter 2, what happened? If we show you 1 here, quarter 1 is 0, quarter 2 is 1, quarter 3 is 0. If this is quarter 3, what, what will happen? 0, 0, 1. Is it here? Is it here? However, if it is quarter 4, what does it mean? All zeros. Okay? That means, okay, we can make use of this V value, okay, to differentiate, okay, whether this record is belongs to quarter 1, quarter 2, or quarter 3, or quarter 4. Is it here? Okay, somebody else will think, how, why don't have a quarter 4 here, right? Because if we have one more variable here, it is a, it is what we so call is a duplicator variable. The reason why? Because uh, if we would like to present, okay, four quarter, okay, we have three digits is more than enough in binary location. Is it here? If that is what? That is a zero one zero 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 one zero zero zero. This four state has already represent, okay, different four different quarter. Okay, this is our colleague, I had it, okay? Because if you, you have a study, the time series analysis, analysis in depth, okay, we have another factor we will affect our analysis. That is something called the octo correlationship. Octo correlationship. Okay, if we want to add one more Q4 here, then this equation will have a whole correlationship issue out there. Okay, however, we keep it simple. Okay, only have a V, Q1, Q2, Q3 here to represent the four quarters. Then we can omit the auto correlationship factor. Okay, but no problem. Okay, for our daily operation, okay, all the data make basically nearly no auto correlationship at all. Okay. For simple calculation, okay? Is it here? Why? I formulate like this. And second here, okay, I would like to have a have, okay the uh, let GMP simple. I just uh, simply put GMP here because I just uh, want to move okay from column E to column K, move this value. Then just I uh, uh, have an equal to this value. Of course, I just simply check and drop. Okay, let let in and let unemployment get a job here like this and drag to the end of the table like this. I just want to have a, a fun formula called equal to E child, okay, to copy this part of data from this left hand side table to the right hand side table. Okay? No, we will not encounter this. The reason why? Because uh, we will we won't have sales data, okay, on the uh, on this uh, on this year. For this one, uh, because uh, because uh, the data is not complete, because we we won't have any sales data, okay, for this year. Yeah. Our data will start from the old yes, correct. As uh, yes. And now, what next? The reason why I would like to formulate my, ta uh, my, 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 my table on the right hand side like this because uh, there's some limitation for Excel for function, okay? I will tell you later why I need to put it like this manner, okay? Now, what next, okay? Now, I would like to, okay, do some ana analysis, okay? To formulate a formula, okay, to forecast uh, the the relationship, okay, between the uh, quarter value and the what and the sales. So what should I do? Okay. So first of all, I will go to data, and then out here we've got something called the what data analysis. Do you still remember this option? This option is come from what come from the add in. Remember. And what next? Okay, we still have uh, so many different analysis methods here. Okay, what we would like to use is this one, regression. Regression. Okay, regression. 
can see the equation here. Just see that equation and click OK. Okay, first of all, okay, for the regression, okay, the input five that wide y range. Y range, what does it mean by Y range? Okay, Y range that means the cells, okay, the things I would like to forecast, okay, this is the cells, okay, Y range. I just simply click this, okay, here, and then highlight from cells. I've already highlighted, okay, orange in color, okay, from D11 to D42. And what next? Then it will ask me for the what? X value. But X range, X range. For H range, I will highlight from H11 to here, M42. And also, because I have already given a label, okay, on top of each table. So remember to have label over here. And also, here have some gimmick for us, okay, some very, very good function for us. What does it mean? That means, okay, we'll have confidence at an interval, 95%. Okay, what does it mean? That means that it will automatically help us to eliminate that 5% outliers. Okay, this is a very good function for us. Okay, if you would like to apply it, okay, you may just simply, okay, confidence, uh, confidence level, 95%. And also, here, what does it mean for the constant is zero? Okay, let me show you. Do you still remember this equation? This equation. As what I, I tell you before, okay, here, see what does it mean in real life. If you are, you are doing investment, okay, on, on your business, it basically, C is the what? The initial investment to your business. This is what we so called C. And in, in a quality geometry, we call it as what? Y intercept. If for the question, if you set okay, uh, the constant is zero. What does it mean? That means you would like to set the y-intercept to be zero. But this is not reasonable because we don't know the y-intercept is zero or not because uh, we should have some initial investment to our business, right? So that's why we we sell them okay to set the constant. To zero, I just let it be. Okay, let it be the okay to to do the calculation. So most of the time, okay, I will select labels. Okay, because I highlight label for my table and confidence level is ninety five percent. No need to 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 mention and uh, no, 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 no need to do it that. Okay, on why ninety five percent? Ninety five ninety five percent basically is our what business standard. Okay, ninety five percent. And now, okay. Also, I would like to like it to calculate the what residues. What okay? Basically, residues. Do you know what is the meaning of residues? Residues is error. <laughs> basically, if you are a data and analyze, okay, if you like to communicate with those professional, you will seldom use the uh, the term error. Most of the time, you will you, you will use the term residues, or else. You, uh, you, uh, or else they will treat you as a, you are not professional, okay? You are only a layman if you use the term error, okay? <laughs> this is some professional terms, okay? Because of this one, this one, this one are quite difficult for you, okay? I will suggest you to uh, to look at what is the residues is good enough, okay? Normal po uh, probability part, okay, e eliminate it because of this is quite difficult for you to do analysis with this. With this. So for this page, I will suggest you to take label, confident level is 95%. Uh, what's deals and then here they select new worksheet like this. After that, click OK, see what happened. Yes, this is the result. Wow. If you, you would like to do it one by one by yourself, this is a hard time for you. However, by means of Microsoft Excel, wow, no pain at all. <laughs> okay, so let me, okay, teach you how to interpret those uh, values here. Basically, it's very easy. It's very easy because uh, all the value has already calculated for you, okay? Okay, how many statistic values, how, how many values, okay, you know how to interpret them here? At least one, I think. <laughs> Which one? Which one? Yes, this one. You know, you should know how to interpret this, right? What does it mean? 
that means uh, 80% of pawns, okay, will fall into this forecasting model. It's already, it's, it is already very good, okay, to be honest, it is already very good, okay? So, because of this is a real life poll, a real life data, up to 80%, the forecasting is very, very accurate, okay? This is what I can tell you, okay? And here, another very important information is this one. Significancy F. This value. If this value, okay, what is the significant uh, significancy uh, F? Okay, I don't want to go in, uh, too in depth. What is the uh, what is the F distribution? But one thing I can tell you is, okay, if you are doing time series analysis, most of the time we are not using normal distribution to do the forecasting. We will use something called the F distribution. And for this one, what does it mean? Okay, please make sure this value is less than or equal as it must be. Less than 0 0.05. Must be less than 0 0.05. 0 0.05, what does it mean by 0 0.05? If this is less than 0 0.05, what does it mean? That means that the accuracy is up to 95%. Okay? Point to the 95% distribution, this area. So, according to significance F here, this value is what? It's less than or equal to 0 0.05. What does it mean? That means that this, uh, this forecasting is reliable. This model is reliable. Is it clear? Okay, this is the second one I would like to teach, uh, uh, tell you. Okay? And the fourth one is very important. It's about the p value. Basically, for the p-value here, okay, how, why is it so important, okay? Also, the value, okay, what we would like to have is less than 0 0.05, okay? We, we would like to have, okay, all the value is less than or equal, uh, less than 0 0.05, also, uh, also equal to, to what? The, the significancy is up to 95%. Okay, actually, out here, how many value here, which is larger than 0 0.05, we have equal 1 and 2. See here, the Q1 factor and the QV factor, which is what? Larger, uh, larger than 0 0.05. Then what should we do here? Okay, basically, if the significancy F, okay, which is larger than 0 0.05, okay, then we do have what? Eliminate those uh, those factor which the p value is larger than 0 0.05. If the significance f which is smaller than as smaller than 0 0.05, then even though those are p value which is larger than 0 0.05, then we can see we, we can still keep them. Okay, we we need to have a have a uh, observe uh, we need to making use of the p value only if the significance f which is what larger than 0 0.05. But for, for, for this case, our value is very, very small, which is 9.5 times what, 10 to the power negative 7, which is a very, very small value. Okay, so we can simply eliminate, okay, no need to have a lock on the p-value. Okay, but in case, if this value is larger than 0 0.05, and we find that there's some uh, p-value, which is larger than 0 0.05 as well, then what should we do? We need to do another times regression analysis. We just simply eliminate this value and this value. If this value is larger than 0 0.05, okay? But what we got here is what? We got this statistic? No. But this part is the result. Let me show you. This part should be the result. What does it mean? That means, okay, let's say, okay? Insert some row here first, I mean. For example, if we have this value, okay, case, uh, case vessel, transpose, okay, like this. If we have uh, this value like this, okay. Okay, we have a value like this, 
and here is ourselves. How to making use of this body? Okay, let me show you. The value will become what? Become this uh, become uh, no need to have intercept, sorry. Okay. No need to have intercept, sorry. Here. It's equal to this value times this value multiplied by this value plus 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 this value multiplied by this value like this okay what does it mean if this is quarter one okay and the net GMP is 2000 and employment rate is 1000 and the net in initial is 100 then the sales will drop <laughs> like this okay if the GMP is like this Wow, I need to I, I need to have uh, some real value, okay? Instead, for example, okay, two thousand. Oh, so small. Within ten, okay, this two value within ten. Okay, and employment rate is ten uh, is is five, and here is five. Then what happened? See, we will use this formula in this manner. Okay, remember, I have a look here at the formula like this. Basically, B. 17 is the is what is the intercept right plus okay use this coefficient b18 b18 is this okay times this value plus b19 is q2 times q2 value plus uh, b12 which is qv value and qv coefficient times b27 this value plus B21 times this value plus this value with this value and then we, will, we, we can use this formula to forecast ourselves. Is it here? Do you, do you remember what is coefficient? Do you remember what is coefficient? No. K, K doesn't make a coefficient now. No, no idea. Okay, let me let me show you one thing. Okay, I'd like to see this. Okay. Let's see this one. A times X plus B Y plus C equal to Z Okay, in our childhood time, okay, at that time, most of the time, we will have uh, this equation that is A times X plus B times Y plus C equal to Z Do you still remember? This is actually a three-dimensional plane, right? Is that, okay? It's like this, okay? A three dimensional plan. Like this, okay? This one is that. This one is Y. And this one is that. And this one is X. Right? Do you remember? Do you remember? Basically, okay. If uh, any equation happen in this three-dimensional space, okay, always equal to what? Is that is depends on what? 
some value x from x, okay, times a, which is a coefficient, plus b times y, which is a coefficient, plus a constant. Most of the time, okay, if we are falling into a two-dimensional space, c is the y-intercept. Do you remember this equation? So what we have here is what x, y are variables, and c is the what is the intercept, and a and b are both are the what the coefficients for x dimension and y dimension. Is it here? Do you still remember the three-dimensional space in mathematics, right? Okay, now what happened in this regression? We just uh, simply project uh, this uh, three-dimensional space to what? Up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven-dimensional space. Okay, intercept is what? It's uh, simply like this, the C, right? And for Q1, Q2, Q3, let GMP, let, U, uh, let unemployment and net E, this, this value. What does it mean by this value? This value, just uh, similar to X, Y, Z, something like that. These are the variables. And for these coefficients, this coefficient is equivalent to what? The coefficient a, b here on this three-dimensional space. We just uh, simply expand this three-dimensional space to this seven-dimensional space. To forecasting the sales value. And sales value here is what? It's equivalent to z here in the three-dimensional space. Is it here? Do you know what is dimension? Okay, one dimension, zero dimension, one dimension, B dimension, two dimension, B dimension, something like that. Zero dimension is what? It's a point. One dimension is what? It's a line. Two dimension is a plane. Three dimension is a cliff, it's our space. And four dimension is our 3D space with time. Okay, in five dimension, this is what you cannot imagine. This is something in, in special relativity. We will add one more dimension called tensor. Okay, something like that. Expand, expand, expand. This is what ma ma mathematics, ma 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 those uh, people doing mathematics are always adding a, a dimension into the equation for easier calculation. Okay, that's why in, in physics, okay, they are now calculating an equation up to what? 13 dimensions. That's why. <laughs> it's in those, uh, so something called the uh, uh, super string theory. They are now calculating uh, those equations, calculate up to 13 dimensions. Yeah. Is it clear? Now, we, we, we are now our calculation up to how many dimensions? Seven dimensions. Okay, high close to super string theory, right? <laughs> but this is very normal in nowadays business. Okay, be honest, okay, for, uh, for those uh, I banker, okay, their uh, regression model will up to even more than seven dimensions. They be 20, 13 dimensions. So that's why they need supercomputer to help him to do forecasting. Okay, actually, okay, for iBanker, they're challenging not only to formulate this model, but also need to watch, okay, for the time to pay uh, to, 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 to do investment to the share market. But because they are, uh, what they are doing to earn money is something called the what? The, 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 the high speed transition. Do you know what is high speed transition? That means they need to make decision and pay money for the share with in between one second. Okay? Okay, one second is not correct. Okay, because the transaction in our exchange market is like this. In one second, okay, the computer will do transaction for 10 to the power 9 times already. So that's why those I banker now need to pay money to employ some professional in mathematics and physics with a PhD degree to do calculation for them. That's why those are teach students from practice department and physics department have acquired a high salary in, in, in Wall Street. That's the reason. Because they, they have a high capability in solving this kind of uh, problem with differential equations. Yeah. Is it clear? Okay. Do you know how to do regression now with Microsoft Excel? Okay, I don't, I don't need you, okay, know how to, uh, by hand, to do the regression. It is impossible. Okay? However, at least for today's session, I have told you two very powerful tools. The first one is what? The correlational matrix, okay? Use the data analysis, and, and analysis, uh, analytic 
hat. Okay, out there you can simply formulate this correlation matrix. Okay, that means the internal for uh, for uh, function. Okay, no need to remember the exact formula for correlation coefficient calculation. You just uh, know how to apply the exact formula. That's great. Okay. The second thing I would like to come across is the trend line. If the forecasting is a only limited on the what two dimensional space like this, okay, have a time and only value to do the forecasting, then you can apply what the trend line in scatter plotting. Then you can get the formula already very easily, okay. But the one main point is what to make sure the r square value should tends to what one, or else. The trend line is not so good, right? And the second thing that is about the what exponential plot, because if you are using the exponential curve, okay, to generate the formula, what happened? Wow, this formula is very complicated because we have the exponential. This one, the exponential index, this uh, the value should be two point uh, two point three something, okay, as I can remember. But this one is something called the exponential index. This is very complicated formula. This is not a、uh, not 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 for business man. So what should we do? Then we need to what to forecast the value again with the formula, and then use this method to calculate the ratio in order to get the what the compound annual growth rate. Okay, to tell your boss. Okay, the annual growth rate is what. Okay, for this scenario, the、uh, the growth rate is seventy six percent, and this is what Amazon did. Okay, since the Yeah, the last ten years. <laughs> okay. And what next here is about the bias analysis. Basically, I would like to let you know. Okay, the mean bias. Okay, how to calculate the bias and the mean bias. The mean bias should be what should close to zero. Okay, if the mean bias is what is positive, what does what does it mean? That means that those points will what is is what distributed above the forecast line. However, if the mean bias is less than、uh, is less than zero, that means the negative value. What does it mean? Those are、uh, those are、uh, pause and、uh, those are data are、uh, distributed under the forecast line. Is it here? This is very important. Of course, what we are looking for is what the mean bias should be zero. Okay. And here, I will I I I I, I first of all introduce what is standard error. Okay. Uh, and also, I would like you to remember, okay, what was the meaning for ninety five percent? Ninety five percent is equal equivalent to how many standard deviation? Do you remember four, four standard deviation, two on the left hand side and two on the right hand side. So two standard deviation and negative two standard deviation all together, four standard deviation is equivalent to ninety five percent. Okay, in business, our accuracy is up to ninety five percent. Because of that last five percent should be unlimited. Okay, that is what we so called the、uh, data cleansing. We we should omit those、uh, topmost and、uh, and lowermost okay data because of that five、uh, percent、uh, data are not accurate. They should have、uh, so many biased, so many、uh, so many not accurate information、uh, situated on those data. Okay. And here, I just want to demonstrate what is bias and also what's the use for the uh, standard uh, standard error. So that's why for this page, okay, I will show you, okay, why I have this formula that is not larger than two times this standard error and less than minus two times this standard error, okay, to identify which data are outliers. Is it clear? And last, and I think this is the most important one, is the, to to use what multi-dimensional method. Okay. If we you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six data all together, and you if if you would like to use these six data to forecast the cells, then what should you do? Then you need to apply the regression model. And regression model you will it, it will improve. Okay, so many step of calculation. However, in Microsoft Excel, you may just simply substitute those table into the function. Okay, then it will automatically generate all the statistics for you, and then you can interpret, interpret those statistics and use the formula. Okay, generated by the regression model. Okay, to、uh, to forecast. Okay, yourselves for your division. Is it clear? Okay, this is a sum up for today's session. Any other questions? Because uh, okay, it's it's a challenge for me to teach this topic in Mianfeng. Do you know why? Because I need to try my very best to omit 
all the mathematics, all the complicated mathematics uh, equation, okay, in the session. Okay, because I would like to let you know, okay, statistics is not so, so, so difficult. Okay, be, in, in case if you have Microsoft Excel to help you. Okay, of course, if you are, you are professional, I, you, you should try other tools other than Microsoft Excel. For example, nowadays, okay, if you would like to have a more accurate, uh, calculation, uh, to do, uh, estimation on, on those, uh, uh, uh forecasting, uh, I think you should, uh, learn, uh, the application called SAS, S-A-S. Okay? This is a quite a good and powerful application. Of course, you need to first of all ask for, ask money from your boss first. Yeah, because this application is not cheap. This application is not cheap. SAS. You know what SAS? No. Okay. Let me try to open it. Go, uh, 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 yeah, here. For me, I like MATLAB. Okay. And Python. Okay. SAS. It's this one. This is SAS. For me, I like this. MATLAB. This application called SAS. Okay? SAS. For me, because I have a quite a lot of mathematical uh, model lead to uh, formulae. Okay? I will pay money for this one. MATLAB. That's why I have an account. Okay? From MATLAB server. <laughs> okay? 